Hi, and welcome to this session on deviation from social norms, where we start to think critically about the definition of abnormality. As you may have already been thinking, there are lots of key things to consider when looking at social norms and when establishing if a behaviour is normal or not. So, for example, we've got three of those issues on screen. First up, we've got time, and by time we mean the era in history, for example. And a good example that you can use in your evaluations is homosexuality. So it was decriminalised in the 1970s, and after this point, social norms and attitudes would have changed. So what this really exemplifies for us is that when such a big change happens in history, then our behaviours are going to change, our attitudes will change, and as such, our definition of abnormality should change with it as well. Another example is context, and by this we mean the situation that a behaviour is done in. So, for example, singing in a school assembly is not okay if someone's in the middle of talking or giving a lecture or a speech, but it is okay if you're part of the choir in that assembly, for example. And lastly, culture is something that we want to bear in mind. And by culture, we mean a group with shared beliefs or values. And a good example is that there's different attitudes towards hearing voices amongst different cultures and geographical locations. So all in all, we've got three key things to consider moving forward when we look at whether deviation from social norms is a good definition of abnormality or not. For our first task of the session, let's look at the examples we had in an earlier video activity. This time, think about the context or situations where these behaviours might actually be deemed acceptable. So pause the video for two minutes while you come up with some suggestions. Hopefully you were able to come up with at least one example for each. Here's a couple more you could add to your list. So drinking alcohol at 11am on your day off work. And of course, we're talking about adults here. So this might be deemed acceptable if we're on holiday, if we were at someone's wedding or your own wedding, or if you were at a christening, which sometimes start really early and then have a party or a celebration afterwards. So although drinking alcohol at 11am generally isn't acceptable, we can see here that there are some occasions where those rules would be bent. Laughing at a funeral. Of course, this will deviate from social norms massively, but there are, I suppose, circumstances where this may be in context. For example, if there are jokes in the ceremony, if someone's wanting a particularly happy send-off, if people are recalling fond memories, as some people do in the, the speeches and the talks that they give at funerals, or maybe even there's some restless infants and children playing, laughing, and we know that it's not going to be their fault. So they're not really deviating from social norms. For another task, read the following descriptions and consider how this time time can impact our judgment about normality. Pause the video here for two minutes while you have a think about this issue. So we can see a stark difference between the two descriptions of Jack and the difference is caused by the year. So if Jack was born in 1940, this would have been before the law about homosexuality was changed and it would have been considered deviant back then. Whereas in 1999, this was long after the legislation had changed. And this suggests that the time drawing which a behaviour is displayed impacts our decision about what is normal or not. So if social norms change over time, then our definition of normality needs to change with it as well. Let's try another task to continue our critical thinking. So one way of communicating with each other is through non-verbal communication, and that includes hand gestures. So for this task, Pause the video for five minutes and think about the example below and what this concludes about the importance of cultural differences when defining abnormality. And if you want to take this further, it's a nice little example for you to find your own demonstrations of hand gestures and come up with a bigger list than this. So even when we take just one example, something as simple as hand gestures, we can see that there's some cultural differences that we need to consider. So to conclude, since there are vast cultural differences in social norms and expectations about behaviour, they must be taken into account when we try to define what is and what is not abnormal behaviour. 
Our definition of abnormality may have to change according to the culture that's being discussed or investigated. And as we've already just seen, this is in addition to considering the time and considering the context of the behaviour. So far in this series of lessons on definitions of abnormality, we have looked at statistical infrequency and deviation from social norms. So for your final critical thinking task, answer the questions below, formulate your response and pause the video for two minutes while you do this. Let's see how you got on. So number one, which definition of abnormality is the most objective? The answer is statistical infrequency because it's the most objective, it's mathematical approach to understanding human behaviour and abnormality, and as such, it eliminates any subjectivity. Number two, which definition of abnormality is the most scientifically credible? Again, it's statistical infrequency. And this is because it uses standardised tests to measure behaviour, for example, as we've seen earlier, intelligence tests. And question three, which definition of abnormality allows some flexibility in interpreting behaviour? And it's deviation from social norms, which is the most flexible since social norms change over time. And as such, our definition of abnormality needs to be able to change over time as well. So well done if you answered them correctly.